Welcome to W.E. Kiwi. And here's a book of why. Why do the oceans have tides? The sun beat down on a hot summer's day as ice cream dripped down the wings of W.E. Kiwi. He had to run as fast as he could to get back to the beach with his three ice cream cones. On a blanket, under a shade umbrella, sat his niece and nephew, AJ and JW Kiwi. As he got closer to them, he called out, Quickly kids, grab your ice cream before they all melt away! The children didn't need any encouragement to get up, so rushed over to him. Licking frantically, they all devoured their ice creams. Looking out to the ocean, W.E. could see the tide was out, exposing seashells which sprinkled in the sand. J.W. wanted to go for a swim, but wasn't able to carry her inflatable canoe too far. She leant over to W.E. Uncle, can you please carry my canoe to the ocean? I can't do it by myself, J.W. asked. A.J., not wanting to be left out, took his boogie board in one wing and chimed in. Uncle, what about my boogie board? Can I take that too? W.E. sighed, as he could only take one at a time, and the sand was incredibly hot to walk over. He scratched his beak, thinking of how to do it. In a moment of genius, he remembered an old tale his grandfather once told him about the tides. He leant over to AJ and JW and said, It's going to be too hot to walk over the sand twice, so let's wait for the giants to trade the water and let the tide come in. Both children looked at each other. AJ whispered to his older sister, Do you know what he means, JW? Scratching her head, JW replied, Um, AJ, I don't see any giants. AJ looked out to the horizon. Squinting, he struggled to see anything. There aren't any giants, uncle. What makes the water flow back? AJ, you can't see the twin sister giants as they live on opposite ends of the world. They're invisible and they never meet in the same place. But we must learn from them. Never make fun of a long bearded hobgoblin as they could trick you. It's a story my grandfather used to tell me every time we went to the beach. Do you want to hear the story? Both children grinned. Okay, okay. W.E. started his tall tale. Well, then here we go. A long, long time ago, even before kiwi birds walked through the world, were three giant sisters. Living deep in the mountains, they looked out every day to the oceans. The three of them stood more than 200 feet tall. Black hair ran down their backs. So long and thick, they had to wash it twice a day. Being so humongous, they could only wash their hair out in the ocean. You can only imagine how their hands were as big as ships and their feet longer than 10 buses put together. Every time they walked over the mountains to the ocean, the alpine goats would scream, thinking it was an earthquake. <coughs> Together they lived in a cave. Every afternoon, they would descend down the valleys to the forest to collect firewood. That They would just pick up a whole tree at a time. To make kindling, they could bend a tree over their knees, splitting it into smaller pieces. The pot that hung over their fire was the size of a football stadium. There weren't any beds big enough to accommodate them, so they all slept on the ground. Over time, they gathered enough branches and pine needles to make a soft bed. The older sister, called Marta, had to look after her two twin little sisters. Their parents disappeared one night after meeting a long bearded hobgoblin. Marta was only six years older than her younger sisters but looked very weathered, and her hair had already started turning grey. This was due to her having to put up with her twin sister's bad behaviour. All day and night the twin sisters fought. 
pulling each other's hair, stealing each other's dinner from their plates, and worst of all, they would pick their nose and throw boogers at each other. The twin sisters were called Dorota and Corolla. Marta and her mind called them DC, which meant despicable children, as that's what they were. The only peace Marta ever got was when the twins had fallen asleep. Marta would go and sit in the lake, soaking her weary legs and feet. As she rested, the lake levels would rise halfway up the mountains. Happy to have the water flowing over her feet, she was able to relax. One afternoon, as the three children gathered firewood, a deer ran past. With one swipe of her hand, Dorosha crushed the deer flat. Picking up its lifeless body, Dorota ate the deer with one gulp. And since that she hadn't shared the meal, Corolla grabbed Dorota by the hair. Corolla pulled her down, sitting on her belly. Screaming at the top of her lungs, Corolla shouted, Mine, mine, mine! That deer was to be mine! With blood oozing out between her teeth, Dorota just squealed with joy at how she annoyed her sister so much. Then Corolla spat in Dorota's face. Pah! Poor Marta knew this would set off a fight of epic proportions. She pulled Corolla off Dorota, separating the two. Both of the twins' eyes started to boil red. Marta was unable to keep them apart, and the battle began. The twins pulled each other's hair, bit each other's ears, scratched with their fingernails, and punched each other's noses. After ten minutes of fighting, the exhausted twins took a rest. Marta sneered at them both. Look how horrible you both are, fighting and not sharing. You are sisters, yet you fight like beasts. I've had enough. I'm leaving you both. Good luck, sisters. Good luck. All the twins saw was the back of Marta as she strode over the mountains. The twins giggled, thinking this was just a trick. They both sat on the rocks, waiting for Marta to return. The sun started going down, and Marta did not come back. Knowing soon the fire needed to be lit for dinner, the twins went back to the cave. That night, they struggled to get the fire started. Their fish-eyed soup was cold and tasted dreadful. In the morning, hoping their sister was to return, Dorota and Corolla sat on top of the mountain gazing out. This lasted but a short time, before they started fighting again. More vicious and violent than ever before, they fell down the mountain to a dry riverbed. Dusting themselves off, they stood up, and there on the shore of the riverbed sat a long-bearded hobgoblin. The twin sisters couldn't help but make fun of him, laughing at the way he looked. His long nose and pointy ears were pink and shiny. His long white beard flowed to his feet. The beard was stained yellow by the pipe he was smoking. His hands were covered in warts and his fingernails were curled and yellow. The clothes that hung off him were brown leather with red stripes down the side. From his two beady eyes, he looked at the sisters up and down. As he puffed on his pipe, He spoke out. You see a hobgoblin and make fun of his features, thinking you are both such beautiful creatures. Sisters, sisters, there used to be three. I saw you, I saw you from the branch of a tree. Now where could your lone sister be? Maybe you could ask for the answer from a humble hobgoblin like me. Delighted that the long-bearded hobgoblin knew where their older sister was, the twins knelt down. The long-bearded hobgoblin cunningly grinned, stroking his beard three times. The sister can return, but what will you have to bring? From this riverbed, a pound of gold to make me a ring. I shall place this upon my naked thumb is for my guitar 
to help me strum. The twins whispered between themselves. Then held out their hands to the hobgoblin. Shaking on a deal, the twins had no idea what they had gotten themselves in for. For the rest of the day, they dug and dug for gold. Finding only tiny nuggets, they kept them in a small pouch. By the end of the day, they looked in the pouch and knew it wasn't enough. For the next week, every day they dug to try and find gold. It was hard and tiring. They were so exhausted every night, they didn't have time to fight. On the seventh day, the long-bearded hobgoblin returned to check on his prized gold. Snatching the pouch off the twins, he weighed the gold. Jumping up and down with glee, he knew he had hit the jackpot. Now I have my gold. My guitar I shall strum. You have no idea what next might come. The spell I cast shall be tomorrow. Then you will see that laughing at me will cause great sorrow. The twins giggled again at the long-bearded hobgoblin, <laughs> making fun of the way he rhymed every time he spoke. The long-bearded hobgoblin puffed rings of smoke over the twins. Sisters, twins, you have passed the test. Now over twenty mountains from the left is a sister who I believe is the best. She sits and waits to see your smiles. It's not far. Just one hundred miles. Rushing off, the twins bounded over the mountain ranges to see their sister. There, sitting in a lake, Marta sat washing her feet. As the twins jumped into the lake, Marta embraced them both. No matter how horrid they had been, she still missed them. Passing of time may have made them more bearable. That night... The twins apologised for their behaviour and swore to be kind from now on. Marta also felt she had been too hasty to run off and leave them alone. As the fire slowly burnt down, the twins embraced Marta, telling her without the help of the long-bearded hobgoblin, they may never have found her. Cold air filled the cave as Marta's face turned white. Her teeth chattered and fingers shook. Not the long-bearded hobgoblin. Did you make fun of his features? Dorota giggled. Yes, he's very ugly. Did he ask for gold to play his guitar? Marta asked. The twins nodded. How did she know? Marta fell to her knees, whimpering. He is the evil long-bearded hobgoblin that banished mother and father. He's tricked us. You should never make fun of a long-bearded hobgoblin's features. I never wanted to tell you about his wicked ways. If he plays his guitar before the next nightfall, then he shall expel you too. And then you only have seven more nights to live. Through the darkness of the night, the sisters ran to find the long-bearded hobgoblin. Searching far and wide, they couldn't see him. Exhausted, they lay in the riverbed, hoping he would come back. And come back he did. As the morning sun bounced through the valley, the long-bearded hobgoblin descended down to the riverbed, playing his guitar. His evil grin greeted the sisters. Marta stood over the long-bearded hobgoblin, but he wasn't intimidated. She got down on one knee and appealed. Sir, my foolish sisters do not know the ways of the long-bearded hobgoblins. I apologise for them, and they are truly sorry they made fun of you. The long-bearded hobgoblin ignored Marta's pleading. Making fun of my ears and of my nose. There's only one way this story goes. I have played my guitar. A beautiful tune. Tonight they will see their last moon. This shall be the last time the sisters three shall ever make fun and stay.
then next to me. Off you go, the fighting twins, to separate ends of the earth in the blowing winds. Meet your father and your mother, there you might find a long lost brother. As the long bearded hog goblin strummed away, the twin sisters were turned to dust and taken by the wind. Marta, horrified, grabbed the long bearded hobgoblin. She squeezed him tightly till he was red in the face. The long bearded hobgoblin smiled, which enraged Marta even more. Pointing to the riverbed, the long bearded hobgoblin threw down his ring. Marta loosened her grip, releasing him. So let's not be silly, or with our emotions, speedy. For you, I will no longer be so greedy. I see you love your sisters, so I shall let them live. To the older sister, there's one more spell I can give. To let them keep living and always growing. But to anyone else, they will never be showing. To make a deal, to give me gold to the end of time. That way your invisible sisters live. And you can be mine. As much as she despised the long bearded hobgoblin, knew her spells were stronger than her. Then let it be. I shall sacrifice my life for my sisters. The long bearded hobgoblin clapped his hands with glee. Closing his eyes, he cast a spell. Till the end of time, the twins will keep rising. And never their bodies shall be downsizing. Sitting in the ocean and washing twice a day. At the opposite ends of the world, they shall always stay. Their sister shall dig and find me gold. As to this long-bearded hobgoblin, her soul is sold. Marta, knowing her fate was sealed, started digging for gold. Every day she dug to please the long-bearded hobgoblin. Though it was gruelling work, she knew her sisters were safe. At either end of the world, the twin sisters stayed. No one would ever catch a glimpse of them, but see the waves as they walked across the oceans. They would travel to new places, but the long-bearded hobgoblin spell made sure they were always at opposite ends of the world. As the sun would rise for one sister, it would fall for the other. They grew bigger every year. When they sat in the ocean to wash their hair, the ocean's tide would push to the other side of the globe. When they finished and stepped back into the mountains, the water would rush back. Marta kept digging till one day the long-bearded hobgoblin came with his guitar. He put it down and smiled at Marta. Lighting his pipe, he relaxed on the rocks. For the love of your sisters, you gave your lasting days. No one has ever loved a hobgoblin in that way. Your love is strong and it's true. I wish I had a soul so blessed as you. So go now, my spell to you is waved. You are nothing but brave. I bow my head and wish you happy trails. May the wind always fill your ship's sails. Marta stood up and shook the hand of the long-bearded hobgoblin. She was nervous, as there isn't any hobgoblins that can be trusted. As she reached the ocean to wash after a long day, There on the beach was a ship, with sails full and blowing. On the side of the ship was her name. On board, fruit and milk filled the galley. Stepping aboard the ship, she sailed out to the horizon. She was never seen again, but as the legend went, she spent her years travelling to visit each sister. As for the long-bearded hobgoblin, he still sulks his way through the mountains, waiting for children to make fun of him so he can cast a wicked spell. So thanks to the giant sisters at the end of the world, that's why we have tides in the ocean. 
And that's the end of my little story, kids. AJ looked at the tide, which had risen since they had listened to WE. Uncle, the giant sister must be bathing as the tide is rising. Yes, AJ, but there's another lesson here. Never make fun of the way someone looks. It's not nice. And if you make fun of a long-bearded hobgoblin, they could cast a spell on you, banishing you forever and making you invisible. AJ and JW giggled, leaping to their feet ready to play in the ocean. AJ ran into the water. I shan't make fun of anyone, Uncle, and no one should make fun of a kiwi bird's chubby belly. With that, they spent the rest of the day playing in the ocean. And as the tide turned and started to go out again, they all went home. The End Thanks for listening and following along to WE Kiwi. We'll see you real soon.